Resin upgrade sets are available for the vast majority of kits out there. The most common ones include cockpit upgrades, wheel bays and engines. As you can see in these shots, the difference between the resin versions and the kit parts can be quite extreme. This may vary as some of the more recent releases have high quality casts which you may consider to be of sufficient detail. Often there are significant time savings to be had as many items, such as the pilot seat, come in one piece which is pretty much ready to be painted. This can save you a few hours of gluing the components together from many small pieces, saving you the trouble of filling in some awkward seams. There are many different companies which use various types of resin. However, generally speaking, resin is more difficult to handle than plastic. In some cases, it requires significant work for it to fit into the plastic parts, such as the fuselage. Regardless, some work will always be required, as they must be removed from the casting blocks they come on. Be aware that some resin types respond better to being removed using a microsaw, while others can be too brittle and respond better to clipping away small sections. Often the grey resin, the type used by Ares and Edward, have properties closer to plastic and respond very well to the microsaw, while the yellow or creamy type of resin is generally more brittle in nature. When painting resin, or for that matter, any small parts, one of the best investments you can make is a high quality 10-0 or smaller paintbrush. If cleaned properly, and with gentle care, they can last years. Never dab the brush on the bottom of the cleaning container. Instead, swirl it around and wipe the brush from the handle downwards. When painting small parts, the quality of the resin parts can be of immense assistance as the boundaries of the colours are well defined and are often at a different height to the other surrounding items. This is especially the case with seat belts, which can be very easy to paint. Patience is the key. Load the paintbrush with minimal paint, never let it drip or even have a drop within the brush itself. Load the brush often and squeeze excess paint off at the edge of the pot. Even the buckles are surprisingly easy to paint without spilling paint on unwanted areas.
Photo Etch upgrades are also available. When removing the parts, be sure to cut the part on a solid cutting mat. This prevents the part bending near the cutting point and warping the part. Try and cut it as close to the part as possible, as removing the little stubs can be a little tricky. If you do need to remove the stubs, special diamond files should also be used. Sometimes, in order to install the photo etch part, you need to remove the original plastic part. To glue the photo etch parts, any of the three types of superglue can be used, depending on your preference. However, a good place to start is with the thick or gel type, as it is the easiest to control. In recent years, a new pre-painted version of the photo etch parts have emerged, and even more recently, a self-adhesive variant. These are a great and easy way to bring nice detail to any cockpit. Keep in mind that the two-dimensional nature of the photo etch means that a well-painted resin cockpit will always be superior, albeit much more difficult. The self-adhesive parts will allow you to move the parts around once they have been applied. The glue has some flex to it, however, and will require some degree of coaxing to put it in the correct place, if not done so on the first application. Many photo etch parts require bending, and this can usually be done with your fingers in conjunction with a pair of tweezers. The grooves or bend lines etched into the metal make this quite an easy task. Take your time and don't rush. Use gradual pressure, and if you see that the bend may be going incorrectly, or if other sections of the parts are being bent that shouldn't be, then stop. To straighten them out again, Simply place the part on a hard surface and use something flat and solid, such as the back end of a blade handle, to level the part out. Bending tools are also available and is a highly recommended item to have on the workbench. Although a large amount of the bending can be done with your fingers, as mentioned earlier, the smaller pieces can prove challenging. This becomes even more important once half of the bends in a multi-bend part, such as a box, are complete. If you intend to use photo etch sets on a regular basis, then this is a vital piece of kit. There are photo etch sets which improve the exterior of the aircraft by adding to or enhancing the surface detail. They often fill in missing detail, such as with the housing on the wings for the flaps, as you can see. Many of these parts need to be rolled out so that they conform to the contours of the curvature on the airframe. Although it is possible to do this by pressing the part against the airframe, it is difficult to achieve a uniform and flush outcome. A better method is to use a rolling set to give the part the required curvature, even overdoing it slightly, and then pressing it onto the airframe, before gluing it down with superglue. Photo etch seat belts, especially pre-painted ones, can be a real eye-catcher, 
and are guaranteed to amaze any observer who is unaware of their existence. Having said that though, they can be very challenging at times, as the belts need to be threaded through the buckles. Don't be concerned with the belts being bent dramatically, as this is actually a good thing. Seat belts generally have creases in them, especially worn ones. Just be careful not to fatigue the metal to the point that it snaps. Using a combination of masking tape and liquid latex, which is used to seal off the edges, the wheel bays and cockpit are masked off. With thin masking tape, the demarcation line for the top colour is masked off. Look at the instruction sheet carefully to determine the exact location that the tape should be placed, taking note of particular panel lines and other features on the fuselage. Below this, large tape is used to mask off other sections to prevent any overspray. Liquid latex is also used to mask off the engine parts. Using chrome self-adhesive foil, the canopy is now masked off. Cut out a piece from the sheet that is slightly larger than the glass pane you wish to mask. 
Once peeled from its backing, place the foil onto the canopy. Rub down the whole area with your finger, making sure that the foil has firmly adhered to the grooves on the frame. Fingernails and tweezers can also be used to make sure that every millimeter of foil is properly down. Then, with a fresh blade and applying almost no pressure whatsoever, the shape of the glass canopy is cut out using the contours of the frame to guide the knife. Then, gently peel off the excess foil. Note that if a clear cut hasn't been made, simply stop, gently rub it down again, and recut. Just before painting, wipe the whole model with an isopropyl alcohol-based solution such as the Testor's plastic prep used here. This will remove any fingerprint marks or oils that may have been left from the manufacturing process.